All right. Um, next, let's talk about pre-trained language models. So these are going to lie on the other end of the spectrum in terms of learning representations. So here, our goal will be to get contextual representations. See, word embeddings associate a vector with each word in the dictionary. This can make for a much better representation than a one-hot vector, but the vector does not change if the word is used in different ways. So, uh, as an example, you have two sentences, let's play baseball, and I saw a play yesterday. It's the same word, technically the word play. Uh, it's used in two very different ways. In fact, in one case it's a verb, in the other case it's a noun. But word to vec would assign the same representation to this, even though these words have very, very different meanings. So could you instead learn a representation that depends on context? The high-level idea here will be to train a language model, so one of these models that we learned about that predicts the next word given the words seen so far, and then run this language model on a particular sentence, like on the sentence, let's play baseball, and then use the hidden state of that model as your representation. So the intuition behind this is that the hidden state of the model for that time step should represent something about the role that word plays in that sentence. And in particular, it'll be a representation that's sufficient to predict the next word, so uh, it also has this proximity property to it, so it basically carries information necessary to predict future words, just like the word to vec embedding, but now this representation is dependent on the other words in the sentence, at least on the preceding words. So there are two questions we have to resolve to actually make this happen. Question one, how to train the best language model for this? And question two, how to then use this language model for downstream tasks? So the high-level intuition is the one described in the slide, but the details of how you actually do this actually matter a great deal, and there are a few different and very important choices to be made. Um, these choices are going to be made by Sesame Street characters. Um, so those of you that are not uh, from the US, maybe uh, not, you're not familiar with Sesame Street, it's a children's show uh, involving these uh, kind of puppet-like characters, um, and um, they're apparently really good at NLP. So we're going to learn about two Sesame Street characters, Elmo and Bert. Uh, Elmo is uh, an acronym that stands for a bidirectional LSTM model used for learning language models in both directions, and then providing context-sensitive context representations. And Bert is a gigantic transformer. Unlike word to vec both Elmo and Bert can provide more nuanced uh, representations of words. Um, this is a little cartoon uh, from a very nice article describing Bert and Elmo. So if you say, well, for word to vec you can say, well, what's the embedding for the word stick? And word to vec will just give you a vector. But Elmo will say, well, there are multiple embeddings. You have to use it in a sentence. And then you say, okay, how about this? Let's stick to improvisation in this skit. Now, having seen that sentence, Elmo will produce a vector representation of that word that is specific to its use in that sentence. And Burke will do the same thing, but differently. Okay. So we'll talk about Elmo first, uh, but I'll preface this by saying that these days, pretty much universally, the models that will be used for real NLP applications will be variants on the Burke model, the Burke and friends, I suppose. Uh, right. And Bert has many friends, but uh, the basic version of Bert, uh, or the big version of Bert, uh, are, are the ones that we'll cover in this lecture. Uh, the various friends of Bert are essentially more efficient or larger variants, but based on the same principle. But first we'll talk about Elmo, because Elmo is a little simpler, a little friendlier, uh, and allows us to discuss the basic principles of using language models to acquire context-dependent embeddings of words in sentences. All right, so let's talk about Elmo. Um, Elmo uh, is kind of doing the obvious thing. Elmo is, uh, is a language model, an RNN language model, very much like these LSDM models we talked about before. Uh, it's going to predict the next word, given the words so far in the sentence. But there's a little bit of an issue with this basic approach. It means that the representation of a word in a sentence, like let's say the word cute, the second word in this sentence, will depend only on the preceding words, but will not be affected by future words. And you actually don't want that, because if you're taking the sentence as input, you would like a representation of words that considers the use of that word in the entire sentence, and that maybe cannot be deduced from just the past words. Remember that for word to vec, we actually used 
context words that came before the center word and context words that came after. Whereas the LSTM here is only using the context words that came before. There are a number of ways that we could address this. We could, for example, use a true bidirectional LSTM, like the one that I covered before, but Elmo actually does something a little simpler. Elmo basically just trains two separate LSTMs. One of them is a language model going forward, like the one we discussed, and the other one is a language model going backward. The backward language model works exactly the same way. So you could think of it as reversing all the connections, or you could just think of it as reversing the sentence. So you have one model that's trained on normal sentences and, the other one, and another model separate from it that's trained on backward sentences. And now you might hope that if you take the hidden state from both of these models together, it will contain both forward information and backward information. So both the forward and backward language model are trained as regular language models, just with max likelihood. The forward model predicts the next word, given the word seen so far, and the backward model predicts the previous word, given uh, the rest of the sentence. And we can uh, apply a name to their hidden state. So we'll say that, well, they're, they're all stacked LSTMs that have multiple layers, and the forward model representation of time step t has ht forward 1 at the first layer and ht forward 2 at the second layer, and the backward one has ht backward 1 at the first layer and ht backward 2 at the second layer. And together, these hidden states uh, form a representation of the word. Uh, not, not too different from word to vec conceptually in that these representations are basically uh, trained to be sufficient to predict nearby words but different from word to vec in that these representations now depend on other words in the sentence. The forward ones are, depend on previous words, the backward ones depend on future words. So how can we then use ELMO? Uh, well, uh, there are a number of uh, approaches that are prescribed in the ELMO paper. The simplest one is to just take the topmost layer, in this case the second layer, and simply concatenate the forward and the backward representation at that time step. And the simple version actually works decently well. The reason that they choose the top layer is because uh, intuitively the top layer is closest to actually predicting the next word, right? Because you predict the next word or the previous word with a softmax, with a, li a linear transformation and a softmax on top of the top layer. So it kind of carries the sufficient statistics you need to make that prediction. But uh, you can actually get a slightly better representation if you combine the hidden states at all the layers. Now, the classic ELMO model actually only has two layers, so maybe it's a little silly, like you're going from taking just the top one to taking both the first and second one, but it does actually make a difference. Uh, and the way that they combine them is they actually average them together. So they still concatenate forward and backward, but then they average over the layers with learned weights WI and a learned overall weight on the whole thing gamma. And what they actually recommend doing is to take the hidden state, uh, the backward and forward hidden state, from an ELMO model, train on a large amount of data, but then treat the W and gamma as learned parameters for the downstream task. So if your downstream task is like translation, for example, the downstream model can actually decide through backpropagation whether it wants the top layer or the bottom layer and what weights it wants to put on them. Now, that's a little bit of a detail. I don't think it's that important for understanding ELMO. So if you just want sort of the high-level version, just think of the, of the simple version, the, the one where you just use the top layer. But I, for completeness, I wanted to explain the more complex version because that's the one that's actually more often used in practice. Okay, so uh, whichever approach you use, whether it's the simple or the complex one, you'll get an ELMO representation of a word in a particular sentence. So then if you're using that sentence for some downstream application, when you feed in that word, you would use its existing representation, like a word to vec representation or a one-hot representation, and you would concatenate to it its ELMO representation. And crucially, you need to run that whole sentence through ELMO first to get that representation, and then uh, you can uh, use it. Now, on this slide, this is just an example. The actual ELMO paper does not test on machine translation. Uh, there's a subtle reason for that, which is for machine translation, you need both an English and a French language model, which you can get, it's just a little more annoying. Uh, but the ELMO paper does test on a number of other applications, including question answering, textual entailment, semantic role labeling, core reference resolution, named entity extraction, and sentiment analysis. And language models help with all of these. 
In fact, language models help with a huge range of NLP tasks. Basically, anything that involves understanding natural language, chances are pre-training a language model on a huge unlabeled corpus of data will help, particularly if you have limited training data for the downstream supervised task. All right, so a summary of Elmo. You train a forward language model and a backward language model on a large corpus of unlabeled text data. The larger, the better. And the forward and backward model are trained independently of one another. You use the concatenated forward and backward LSTM states to represent the word in the context of the other words in that sentence. And then you concatenate the Elmo representation to the word embedding or one hot vector as an input into a downstream task-specific sequence model. And this provides a context-specific and semantically meaningful representation of each token. And it seems like a lot more trouble to go through than just word to vec, because now you need to actually store your whole language model and run it at test time to get these embeddings. But it works really well, and it helps a lot compared to the context-free kind of word to vec representations. But what works even better is other Sesame Street characters. And that's what we'll talk about in the next section.